All right, today we're gonna fit a Mishimoto transmission cooler into a Land Rover Discovery. All right, so there's pretty much numerous reasons why you might want to fit the third party uh, cooler into your car. You might want to move it from the original place. You might have upgraded something and you want to get more cooling. Or, like me, you might have just got fed up with the original parts, which are now pretty much 25 years old, splitting and failing. So I bought my original one split, bought another one, and then literally 100 miles down the road, that split. Then I bought another one, which is here. And this one, even though it looks identical, has actually got a different fitting on there. And uh, these things are pretty hard to find now and I'm getting a bit fed up of not having the car on the road. So I'm just gonna fit my Michimoto one, which to be fair, is much cheaper than buying second-hand parts anyway, and much, much cheaper than buying um, brand new sort of OEM bit. So let's crack on. All right, I've just chosen the Mitsumoto one because uh, I basically stated my problem on some uh, Facebook forum and somebody said, there you go, never had any problems with these, that will fit you nicely. So the radiator is kind of like a different size to the old one, but the front of the Land Rover has got loads of space, easy enough to accommodate uh, accommodate this. So the only real situation that I've got to kind of work out is how to get these fittings to fit on the old pipes that come up. Also included, which I didn't know, is actually some tubing, so that helps. And also got some kind of fitment there and some Jubilee clips to um, fit the tube onto the space there. Okay, so the most tedious bit of this really is trying to find whatever fitting is supposed to go onto here to attach it to the new radiator. I don't really want to make new lines up from the cooler and even then I'd still need to work out kind of like this, but at the uh, transmission end. So what I did is I took the old cooler off and I took that to um, a place that does plumbing and a place that does uh, like air tools so I started off with this, um, which has got the right uh, size for this thread to, to fit onto. Um, BSP, half inch BSP that is. Um, but unfortunately inside it's kind of like got uh, kind of flanged in so it's not going to fit. So I went out and found the second one, which has got a much bigger inside, which now means it will fit onto here and this will also screw up to it. Alright, this has just been an unbelievably tedious part of this business is finding out what the fittings are, the old fittings, and trying to plumb it into the new radiator. So I found out pretty quickly that the radiator, the cooler radiator that I bought that doesn't fit is half inch BSP. And that seemed like that was going to fit kind of all round. So I bought this, that didn't fit. But I don't really want to chop the ends off what I do have, I want to preserve that, so I want to, I had to try and like maintain and try and work out where this fitting was going to come from and what it was. I looked up, unless I'm, you know, used to using the internet, I looked up all the places I could find, googling away to try and find out what that little bit was. I found a couple of forums where they mentioned that they'd try and made this change and it seemed like it was probably going to be M20. And I found up the kind of suppliers of the places that provide fittings to do this. They're like M20, that doesn't sound likely. They certainly don't have that. It's gonna be AN, BSP, kind of like everything else, but. Anyway, finally phoned up uh, Ashcroft Transmissions. They they are, they know all things Land Rover transmission. And the car on the phone just said very quickly, it's M20. So it definitely is M20, even though that seems like a totally non-standard fitting for kind of like this plumbing. So then I thought, okay, brilliant, I've actually found what I need to get. Um, and then I couldn't find the bit, M20, as a kind of plumbing fitting like this. Again, I just couldn't find it. There's one guy out in America that had it. Uh, and again, after a lot of kind of fiddling around, I found a farming supplier and they did me this 
uh, adapter. I think it's for the sort of pneumatic, hydraulic, whatever fittings for the back of tractors, but that goes from half inch to uh, M20. So I can now adapt the original fitting on the car to this kind of 90 degree shoulder and we're in business. Sorry, let's actually get that bit done. It's as clean as it's going to be. I found this um, washer, you know, hose lock when you get uh, garden hose pipes, the hose lock TM thing. This washer seems to fit on pretty good there. Um, here's our adapter. And I think I'm going to use a goodly amount of uh, lock thread <laughs> rather than Loctite lock thread. Mm. I would use that if it hadn't all seized up. Put a more sensible amount of that on this time. Get this nice and straight. One side. <clears throat> All right, now that's actually out of the way, we can get on and try and work out where we're going to fit this. So the original one fitted from here and across, but obviously this isn't as long and it's tall and just a different shape altogether, basically. So the inlet and the outlet are on the same side, so it makes sense to have it coming out this side. I think it makes sense to have it pointing over in this corner. I think if I fold this this back down, so that's flat, then uh, I can just slot it, drill a couple of holes in that, tie it to that. And then on this side, I can use one of those kind of like round black ties or a tie wrap or something just to keep it flat onto there. So I need to move the horn because that's uh, making it sit proud. I need to bend this back out and drill holes. There it goes. think this is the original horn because it looks really different to the other one. So who knows? It's certainly full of mud. Okay so this radiator being uh, aluminium and super light means that these tabs here should be pretty bendable if I just work them out slowly but surely. I just want to bring that back on itself and make sure it's flat. Sort of 90 degrees to where it is now. Ah, oh, doing the wrong side. <laughs> mm.
that is probably as good as it needs to be. All right, we're back, and this uh, horn is still getting in the way, so I'm just going to take that off because it really can go anywhere. So it doesn't need to be there. I'm a bit wondering as well how I'm going to kind of do up when this is here. How am I going to actually reach behind there to get the uh, get the uh, nuts and the bolts done up? But anyway, that's a nice fit there. It's nice and flat. It's not going to go anywhere. So let's get some uh, fixings fixed. I know it's not the best, but I'm going to just tie rope this uh, under here for now, and that is pretty secure. Given how secure the other end actually is, like, it wouldn't matter if it was popped off. There we go. Right, now we need to do some plumbing. So the actual radiator kit itself came with uh, a section of hose as such. Got uh, also the appropriate uh, Jubilee clips to go around. So let's 
see how much we're going to need. All right, well, obviously doing it like this, the irony is you're blocking the radiator with the hose that's feeding it. But I think that will do. All right, so the radiator's basically in now. It's secure, it's got its... Uh, pipes attached to all the ends. The only thing I need to do really is kind of like work out how to secure the original feeds because uh, they were attached to the radiator which held them in place and they're not now. So before I do that I'm gonna run some I'm gonna run the engine, run some fluid around, run some more around and see if I've actually got any leaks at these new new junctions. Oh, I need to replace uh, some of the oil that we lost when it's split. So I cannot find the right size container. So I'm going to try and wing it with this one, which is just going to be awkward. And I think pretty messy. So let's see how we go on. I'll assume that's okay for now because I cannot test it until we've got the engine running. So the next thing to do is try and jump start it because the battery is completely flat.